Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today, pag-uusapan naman natin ng iba't ibang uri ng uh, conditional statements according sa negation ng ating hypothesis at ng ating conclusion. Alam natin na sa geometry, marami tayong theorems, postulates, at mga uh, statements na kailangan nating malamang isulat at intindihin at malalaman lang natin ito or mabibigyan natin ito ng linaw kapag alam natin kung paano ito i-form or i-formulate gamit ang ating mga symbols at mga ways on how we write conditional statements. At yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw na ito na kung saan gagamitin natin ng isa sa mga powerful operations sa geometry and also sa symbolic logic which is yung negation. So ano nga ba ang negation? So by definition, the negation of a statement is formed by writing the negative of the statement. So paano ba natin gagawing negative ang isang statement? So hindi lang sa mga mathematical expressions at mathematical operations ang uh, negative signs. Pwede rin natin itong i-dikit uh, sa ating mga verbal phrases at verbal statements sa geometry. So for example, ang ating statement ay, the computer cover is red. At ang pwede natin gamitin uh, negation ng ating verbal statement na ito ay magdadagdag lang tayo ng isang salita at yun ay yung word na not. So instead of writing the computer cover is red, ang negation niya would be the computer cover is not red. So ganyan natin ininegate yung ating mga statements gamit ang verbal uh, word na not sa ating negation process. Now since we're working on mathematical problems and mathematical uh, statements, pwede natin tong i-convert sa symbolic form. At gagawin lang natin, tulad ng mga nauna natin example, ay mag-assign ng variable sa ating mga statements at yung ating statement na the computer cover is red is pwede nating iset siya as P at yung negation naman niya na hindi rin nalalayo sa symbol na ginamit natin sa ating original statement, gagawin lang natin siyang not P which is one of the ways on how we negate a statements or operation in mathematics or pwede rin tayong gumamit ng symbol na ito. So ito ang symbol of negation. So yung little wave na yan, right next to the letter P, it denotes that it's not P. So ganyan natin siya basahin at ganyan natin ito gamitin sa mga symbols tulad ng example natin na ito. So paano ba natin gagamitin yung mga negation na yan para sa ating mga conditional statements? Dito sa example na to, meron tayong hypothesis, which is P, at conclusion, which is Q. Na ang P natin, a figure is a square, at ang Q natin, it is a quadrilateral. At kung isusulat natin yung kanyang conditional statement or if-then form, pwede natin siyang isulat as if a figure is a square, then it's a quadrilateral. At in symbol form, alam natin na ang symbolic form ng ating conditional statement ay P, then Q. So ito yung ating conditional statement na tinatawag in symbolic logic form at gagamitin natin yung mga symbol na yan para sa ating uh, pagsulat ng iba't ibang pamamaraan ng conditional statements using the operation of negation. So paano ba natin na i-transform yung ating original or conditional statements na P then Q into different Forms. Unahin natin yung tinatawag natin converse form of our conditional statement given by this formula. At yung formula natin dyan, instead of P, then Q, meron tayong converse which is Q, then P. Nang ibig sabihin lang ay gagawin natin, uh, pag switch natin yung ating hypothesis at yung conclusion, so si hypothesis magiging conclusion at si conclusion ay magiging hypothesis. So yung ating new statement would be, if it's a quadrilateral, then a figure is a square. Dahil yung ating P and Q ay pinagpalit natin ng pwesto at sa mathematical statement na ito, pwede natin itong isagawa using its converse. At ang susunod nating 
type ng uh, conditional statement ay yung tinatawag nating inverse. At yung ating inverse naman, instead of using P then Q, yung ating new operation would be not P then not Q. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, kung ang ating P ay a figure is a square, not P would be a figure is not a square. At yung ating Q, it is a quadrilateral, so it's going to be not a quadrilateral. And if we write it in conditional statement form, ang ating inverse would be, if a figure is not a square, then it's not a quadrilateral. So yan yung ating dalawang pamamaraan ng pagsulat ng uh, conditional statements gamit yung ating mga negation operation. At yung panghuli naman ay yung tinatawag nating contrapositive at ang contrapositive, it's similar to our conditional statements but in negated form. So kung ang ating conditional statement ay P then Q, ang ating contrapositive would be not P, I mean not Q, then not P. So yan yung uh, um, negated uh, version ng ating converse, I mean, not the conditional statement. At ito yung tinatawag na ating contrapositive. So kung ang ating uh, P and Q ay Given by that statement, ang ating sentence form ng contrapositive would be if it is not a quadrilateral, then the figure is not a square. So, ininegate lang natin yung ating converse at meron na tayo ngayong contrapositive which is the last type of conditional statement na gagamitin natin para sa ating lesson ngayong araw na ito. So, meron tayong tatlong Different ways on how we write a conditional statement. Meron siyang converse, meron siyang inverse, at meron siyang contrapositive. Now, ano ba ang halaga ng mga iba't ibang uri ng conditional statements na yan? Dito natin ibabase kung ang ating conditional statements ay tinatawag na equivalent statements. So, ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng equivalent statements? In mathematics, it means if two statements are both always true, or both always false, we call them equivalent statements. So kung meron tayong dalawang statements na laging true or laging false, ibig sabihin yan, equivalent sila. So paano ba natin siya ika-classify as equivalent statements? Yung unang nating case would be, if the conditional statement and the contrapositive statement are both true, then we call them equivalent statements. So kapag true daw yung ating conditional and then yung contrapositive, then true statement ang ating an equivalent statement yung ating conditional statement. At yung ating susunod na case, if the converse statement and the inverse statement are both false, then we call them equivalent statements. Now, huwag kayong malito kasi kung meron tayong example, mas mauunawaan natin ito. So, kailangan lang natin tandaan na equivalent statements ay pwedeng 1, always true, and 2, always false doon sa ating dalawang statements. So, let's have an example. So, yung ating example dito, yung conditional statement natin or yung ating original uh, if-then statement would be kung ang P mo ay angle B is 160 degrees, at angle B is obtuse angle, if we're going to write it in conditional form or if-then form, since ang ating P and Q are defined, it will be if measurement of angle 160 degrees, then angle B is an obtuse angle. And this is a true statement because this is our original statement. According to our rule, kung parehas true statement ang ating conditional at contrapositive, then equivalent statement siya. So, paano natin isusulat yung ating contrapositive? Ang ating contrapositive is not Q, then not P. Ito yung ating contrapositive. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan, yung ating contrapositive should be true daw. So, ibig sabihin niyan, if yung P natin is if measurement of angle B so, hindi yan yung ating Q, hindi to be the Q. If angle B is not obtuse, then 
the measurement of angle B is not 160 degrees, which is, as we know, still true dahil kung hindi siya obtuse, then hindi naman nga naman siya 160 degrees. So yung angle B natin ay hindi equal sa 160 degrees. So that means parehas true yung ating statements dyan sa conditional at contrapositive, therefore equivalent statement siya. At kung itetest naman natin siya sa case number 2, yung case number 2 natin, kailangan daw false statement si converse at false statement din si inverse. So ang ating converse, kung matatandaan ninyo, ay given by uh, our symbol or our operation as Q then P. Now, himay-himayin natin kung bakit false statement C converse ng ating conditional. Dahil sinasabi dito yung ating statement na converse, kung isusulat natin yan, is that if angle B is obtuse, then the measurement of angle B is equal to 160 degrees. Now, bakit ba ito false statement? Dahil meron tayong pwedeng uh, counterexample ng ating hypothesis na magbibigay na conclusion natin na false. So, paano ba natin, paano tayo makakapagbigay ng counterexample that would make our statement false? Paano kung halimbawa ang measurement natin is equal to 100 and or 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is a right angle. So kung yun ay counterexample natin dito sa angle B, then magiging false yung ating statement dahil hindi lahat ng, uh, or may mga examples tayo na pwedeng kunin para sa angle B na hindi naman obtuse angle. So yan, ang dahilan kung bakit false statement yung ating converse at yung ating inverse statement for this particular example, which is not P, then not Q, ito din ay magbibigay sa atin ng false statement because if yung ating measurement ng angle B is not equal to 160 degrees, then yung measurement of angle B natin is not an obtuse angle. Pero paano kung ang ating measurement ng angle B ay... 100 or 90 or 87 degrees, which is an acute angle, so an example of an acute angle. So, maiiba na rin yung uh, uh, result ng ating statement or inverse statement. So, therefore, yung ating statement would be false. So, when this happens, dito natin malalaman na equivalent statement yung ating conditional statement. So, for this particular example, Kung hindi natin ikayang i-reverse yung ating statement, then yun yung ating magiging false statement ng ating converse at ng ating inverse. So let's have more examples on how we identify equivalent statements by understanding how to write our conditional statements in its converse form, inverse form, and its contrapositive. So ang ating uh, initial statement if it's raining, then it's cloudy. So, kailangan natin siyempre ng ating P at ng Q. So, ang ating uh, conditional statement or yung ating hypothesis sa conditional statement would be if it's raining at yung ating conclusion would be it is cloudy. So, when this is given, now we are ready to write its converse, its inverse, and its contrapositive using the formula that we have a little while ago. So, unahin natin siyempre yung ating converse at ang ating converse by the formula is Q then P. So, ibig sabihin, pagbabalik ta rin lang natin si Q and si P ng placement. So, ang ating converse would be if it is cloudy, then it is raining. So, yan yung ating converse ng ating conditional statement given by Q then P. At kung kukunin naman natin yung ating inverse, dapat syempre alam natin yung ating clue or formula which is given by not P, then not Q. So not P, then not Q. So given the converse, ininegate lang natin yung ating conditional or original statement. So if it's not raining, then it is not cloudy. So this is our 
inverse form ng ating conditional statement at yung ating last would be the contrapositive at yung contrapositive natin would be negating our converse so yung ating equation or yung ating formula would be not Q then not P so ang ating statement niyan would be if it's not cloudy, then it is not raining. So, ang ginawa ko lang, negate ko lang si converse. At yun na nga yung ating contrapositive ng ating conditional statement. So, yan yung mga pamamaraan kung paano natin na uh, isulat yung iba't 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 ibang uri ng conditional statements according to its converse, inverse, contrapositive, and how to identify if our statement is equivalent statement. Now, ang question, sa tingin nyo ba ay equivalent statement ang ating conditional statement? You can comment it down below para sa ating uh, solution for this particular question. So, kung naiintindihan ninyo yung ating mga iba't ibang formation ng ating, ng ating conditional statement, can you give us an example of equivalent statement na kung saan kailangan yung ating conditional at contrapositive is true or yung ating inverse and ating uh, uh, converse ay false. So, comment it down below. Write it down. Tingnan natin yung mga iba't ibang uri ng inyong examples ng ating equivalent statements. At yan ang ating lesson on conditional statements. So, kailangan lang natin ng practice and make sure that when we are uh, using our P and Q ay naiintindihan natin yung ibig sabihin or yung napoformulate natin conditional statement base sa ating P or hypothesis at Q or conclusion. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!